Hello, my name is Jane Shaw and I am the Access and Outreach Manager for Material Science at the University of Oxford. So this talk is um, about Oxford Materials and it's divided into two parts. So the first part, which is this part, um, is going to give you a brief overview of what material science is, um, material, what material science at Oxford is about and how you can um, find out more about um, the subject. The second part, which is um, a second um, video to look at, is going to cover um, how you get in, what happens when you graduate. So hopefully this first part will get you all excited to listen to the second part. So um, material science, as nicely summed up by Saskia, innovative, exciting, interdisciplinary subject, um, and really very much at the forefront of um, change the advancement in technology. Um, as technology advances, you need the materials to um, move with the times to allow those efficient um, technological advances to take place. So it's very much an applied science. Um, and you will be using the um, physics that you're studying at A-level and um, chemistry and underpinned by your maths. And linked into this Venn diagram is showing, um, there's also links to biology, medicine, and engineering. So if you have interest in any of those subjects, it really is worth you considering material science further and thinking if it's the subject that's right for you. Um, and like any degree subject, the courses have slight nuances, slight differences, depending on what university you decide to study at. And it really is important to make an informed choice. So on this slide, there's um, a list of some of the other universities that offer material science, and I encourage you to look at those courses as well. So when you make that decision, you're making the decision that is right for you. So why do materials at Oxford? Um, it is um, a, very much a top ranking university. We have material science experts, world experts within the department, and we have a growing undergraduate community and actually a growing um, postgraduate community as well. And that's indicative of a science that's evolving and is very much in demand. Um, there's approximately now about 40 undergraduates in a year group. So if you are applying for 2021 entry, you will be um, looking hopefully to be one of approximately 40 students. It's a four year course and you end up with a Masters in Engineering of Material Science. You get an overview of the material science curriculum and the opportunity then to um, hone your passions for particular um, uh, modules or ideas or topics within material science before having um, in your final year, um, the chance to do a real research project as well. And I'll cover that in a bit more detail uh, later on in the talk. So why study material science in the first place? Um, it's very much about how a material works, why it works that way, and how you can manipulate it to uh, make it better for the application that you want it for. So it's for the curious mind, for the innovative mind, um, entrepreneurial mind, and uh, you know, problem solving mind. Um, like a lot of uh, physical sciences, I guess, but it really is something special to be looking at you know, materials on the micro scale or nano scale and working out how you can design them to be better at the job that you're looking for them to do. Um, and within this image, you've got, you know, we can use a range of different techniques. So you've got um, students looking down an optical microscope, you've got students using an electron microscope. At Oxford, we have a multi-million pound electron microscope suite, which allows us to um, not just observe the material, but to be able to analyse the material as well and look at how we can improve it. In the top right corner of this um, slide, you can see and what we call a phase diagram. So we want to understand how materials work in different environments. And this is looking at the steel alloy. Across the x-axis, you have the percentage of carbon, and on the y-axis, you have the temperature. 
and um, no surprise when you've got different temperatures, the carbon and the iron will interact differently within the um, interstitial alloy and um, you will have areas uh, where they've combined differently, which will result in different properties of that steel. And it's basically designing that steel, that thermal processing, how you're going to make that steel um, for a particular job, whether it be a steel to be used um, on a railway track or a steel to be used in a scalpel blade or a steel to be used um, in some novel extreme environment um, as well. Maybe it's going to go up into space, um, who knows? But it's really important to have a clear understanding of how it behaves at different temperatures and how you're going to process it. As well as um, metals and um, uh, alloys, we look at a range of different materials and uh, one of the sort of uh, big groups um, looks at biomaterials. Biomaterials is something that you can opt to study further in um, your third year at Oxford and this slide here in the middle on the left hand side is showing you a human um, heart valve cells and in the middle you've got a man-made collagen scaffold on which you can grow those cells with the idea that you reduce the um, immune response um, in transplant surgery. Um, and the big idea within that field is to be able to grow a pancreas. So real big ideas and maybe something that you could be part of in the future. We look at nanomaterials and as you will know from your studies in science, that as, as you go down onto that scale, your properties are changing as your surface to volume ratio changes um, quite dramatically and it's understanding how we can use those and we look at nano devices. Um, and as I said, it's the whole kind of life cycle of that material, you know, not just characterising it and understanding how it works, but also about processing it and making it, um, well, making it, making it for um, making a commercially viable material for the job you want to do. And so sort of this ugly piece of machinery here um, is churning out organophotovoltaic, so polymer solar cells. And that's an area that's really quite interesting in looking at um, renewable energy sources and the materials that are going to underpin that moving forward. Um, and another Part of that is nuclear fusion. And the physics of nuclear fusion is there, is understood. However, when you're looking at a nuclear fusion reactor here, you need to find materials that are going to be able to withstand those extreme temperatures, extremely high temperatures, plus neutron bombardments. So materials for nuclear fusion are a really interesting field um, and looking at um, what can be made to make this a viable production of energy in the future. We look at batteries and you're probably listening to this talk on a device that um, uses a battery and the way that you want that battery to work, you want it to be um, efficient, you want it to be light, you want it to be cheap um, and it's looking at the materials that are used within the electrodes, the electrolyte um, and what way we can use those materials so that we've got a sustainable um, battery that's um, light, efficient and um, of good value so as it can go to market and um, you know you can have your phone or laptop working for endless amount of time on a, on a battery. We look at, so on the bottom right, um, you're looking at again graphene and nanomaterials and looking at computing and um, moving on from that, looking at quantum, a really quite new field and quantum materials are really interesting and exciting area um, of research as well. So material science at Oxford. Um, if you study material science at Oxford, you have approximately 10 lectures a week. Um, and on top of that, you are supported with two to three tutorials a week. And um, talking to our undergraduates takes about six to eight hours of preparation for a tutorial to um, answer tutorial questions, which are then discussed with your tutor who, you know, in groups of you know, two to four students, so very small groups, um, great interaction to um, consolidate your understanding of the lectures and um, give you a clear understanding um, of that area of material science. This is all complemented by um, practicals where you have two afternoons of practical 
um, work a week and every other week you are in the labs doing that practical practical work. Um, one of the favourite labs is um, shown there in the top right um, and you've got Sergio, our lab um, coordinator, supervisor, um, demonstrating scanning an electron microscope to students um, where they're looking at um, identifying components of a motorcycle engine which they've deconstructed and they're carrying out analytical tests on it and the electron microscope is one of those tests so um, they will get up an image and within that microscope they're also um, able to use a x-ray spectroscopic technique which um, identifies elements within the sample that they have prepared um, for analysis and they can get an idea of what that material is and why it's being used for that component. Um, look at novel materials which I've mentioned already with regards batteries. The other interesting thing there is within that um, engine the turbine blades which is something I really find quite fascinating are made of a nickel super alloy which has a lower melting point than the environment in which it's working. Listen to that again, a lower melting point than the environment in which it is working. How is it designed? Something maybe you can look at and find out a little bit more about. So the first two years of our course um, are giving a real grounding in material science and a broad um, overview of this fascinating subject. Um, first year, you know, bringing you, giving you all those skills and exciting you about the subject um, and then building on that um, understanding and that knowledge in your second year. Um, and within that, some of the highlights um, that are, the, are um, considered within sort of the learning of that, are, you know, the, the practical classes that you do and the computing that you do, MATLAB, and uh, the opportunities to visit industry. You have um, six industrial visits, one each term, and you um, have to attend um, at least four of those, as four of those need to be written up. Um, and that's, again, um, sort of showing that this really is an applied science and um, we have um, really good industri industrial links as well. Another key point within that two-year course is one that you might see up there is an entrepreneurship course. Um, it is not uncommon for our students on graduating to set up their own companies and um, it's very much an entrepreneurial idea so with, with that in mind um, and with that knowledge that course has been introduced um, to the programme. So after those two years, just like doing your two years of GCSEs and combined, working out that, you know, science and maths are the things that you really like and taking them on to A-level, um, you will then have a clear idea what you want to opt to do in your third year. And there's a range of options available to you, um, taught by experts in their field. Um, and this slide outlines some of those options. And it's not uncommon for people to start the material science degree with a real interest in one area of material science, maybe nanomaterials, and then get to the third year and decide, you know, ceramics is what, is what they would like to study further. Um, so after your three years, you have done what we call part one of the course. Your first year, you will have done a set of exams to move you on into your second year. At the end of your second year, there are no exams. The exams come at the end of your third year where you are examined on the three years of work that you have done and that's your part one then complete before you go on to your part two which is a research project and um, nicely um, summed up by a prospective student many years ago now as is that the wow factor of your course? And I would say yes, I think it very much is a wow factor of the course whereby you are working on real research supported by an academic um, who's an expert within their field, um, more often than not at Oxford, but the opportunity does exist to carry out your final year overseas. Um, and that is done over extended terms. So around you know, 32 weeks um, of the year rather than the 24 <laughs> weeks. Um, previously. And some examples of these research projects are um, shown on this slide. Ellie's um, project is um, identified there on the left hand side where she was looking at reducing 
um, impurities in multicrystalline silicon, um, different types of multicrystalline silicon used in solar cells. And what you're seeing in image A um, are highlights where she's been able to reduce those impurities. B is your control, and C is a magnified sample there where you're looking at a grain boundary, and those dots are the impurities, the iron impurities within that multicrystalline silicon. Um, Lewis in the right hand side there spent his uh, final year over in California, Santa Barbara, carrying out research in um, materials modelling, looking at um, what would happen to a foam that's encased in the metal as part of a wind turbine blade should there be a bird strike. So looking at computer modelling as well as doing physical um, experiments as well. And in the bottom right hand corner, what you've got there is um, atom probe tomography and Megan was looking at um, a type of aluminium alloy to be used in the automotive industry and the pre precipitates precipitates even that um, were within this alloy and how they would affect the performance um, of the um, material that that was being used with within the um, uh, car or um, yeah automobile <laughs> um, and uh, so a range of different projects and um, no big surprise, therefore, that about a third of our students um, upon graduating continue to do research. This is what some of the students have thought about their time at Oxford. Um, Isabel and Bradley are in their final year graduating this year. Anisha graduated a little while ago. Um, so really enjoyed their time at Oxford and have learned a lot and have got not just an expert um, outline of material science, but a range of transferable skills as well. So how can you find out more about this fascinating subject? You can read our course brochure um, and we have a reading list on our website. You know, do go to our website. Um, if the answers aren't on our website, do not hesitate to email us at Schools Liaison um, and we run a range of outreach events as well. So. Going forward, I wish you all the best in whatever you do in the future, and I hope this information has inspired you to find out more about material science. Thank you.